911, what is your emergency? A bulldozer levels a building in Granby, Colorado. Then another. And another. It's part of a meticulously planned citywide demolition project. And what like a bulldozer went crazy. But this plan wasn't put together by city engineers or construction workers. Just received a 911 call reporting that there is an out of control bulldozer. It's the brainchild of an angry man with a grudge against a lot of local people and businesses. They can't tell who's driving it, but there is someone inside. The man inside this armor-plated bulldozer is Marv Hemeyer. As horrified townspeople run for their lives, Hemeyer wrecks buildings and vehicles one after another. And he's ready to take on sheriff's deputies or anybody else who stands in his way. Hemeyer's an accomplished welder who spent a lot of time inside a secret workshop. Um, yeah, it's all in tape and metal, and you can't see who's driving or anything. There, he outfitted the dozer with two sheets of half-inch steel plating with a layer of concrete in between. What type do you need? On this day, he seals himself in and takes off on a violent ride. Air 43, we've had automatic weapon fire coming from the bulldozer. Inside his cockpit, two assault rifles, lots of ammo, and video monitors to help him see where he's going. A bank, a hardware store, a concrete factory, even the town hall, and especially the police department. The one thing all of those places have in common, Hemeyer feels he has been wronged by these businesses or the people who own them. He even exacts revenge on the home of the town's former mayor. He does have armor piercing weaponry. Deputies and SWAT teams try everything. But even armor piercing bullets can't penetrate Marv Hemeyer's homemade metal and concrete shield. Jasper, you want to try to box him in? At one point, a heavy equipment operator decides to put a stop to the carnage. He climbs behind the wheel of his front end loader and gets set to take on the armored bulldozer. But quickly, the operator finds himself in an industrial-sized game of chicken. Hemeyer speeds ahead, aiming directly for the blockage. Realizing his intentions, the loader attempts to flee, but the armored dozer gives chase. Ramming the tractor off its path, it steams ahead to its next target. Authorities seize the narrow opportunity, using the front loader truck to block the dozer in. The civilian operator hurries to safety. Forced to continue ahead, E. Meyer pushes his creation to the limit. The bulldozer grinds to a halt under the rubble of a steel building. Its engine has called it quits. As authorities try to get into the cab of his homemade tank, Marv Hemeyer takes his own life. It takes officers several hours and a cutting torch to finally get inside the cab. None of the townspeople are hurt, but the price tag on this rampage is about $7 million. This is a tape. Uh, this is when we first arrived on scene, and it looked like uh, officers standing on a hill above this uh, earth mover turned tank were firing some pretty heavy arms at him, trying to find a weak spot, trying to find some way to uh, immobilize. This span was now on the east side of Granby in what's called an independent propane company yard. We thought for a time he might actually be taking out some of the propane tanks. He kind of looked like that's what he was thinking about, and then he took off and headed into the downtown area again. Now, if you'll stay with me, 
me, photographer David Gregg is going to fast forward some of the videotape, show you just a little bit of some of the uh, crazy things that this man has done over the course of the past hour and a half. And again, we want to emphasize at last check when we were last over Granby about 15 minutes ago, he had been stuck inside the back end of the Gamble's appliance store, apparently taken out his own radiator and the engine had seized up and SWAT team members were trying to uh, get inside the tank. But a tank it is. It's an earth mover no more. It's actually a tank. Um, do you guys have some questions that you would like to pass along? Those, those are the propane tanks that he was kind of milling about for a time. Absolutely. Luann, can you take us through it chronologically so people get a sense? I know it all started about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Where did he begin? Do you know? He started on the end of town. We are told unofficially, we want to emphasize that, this man owned a business next to the concrete company, that he had a long-standing beef with the concrete company in Granby, a very long-standing, decades old, it was described to us, and then he went after the concrete company first. He then made his way down Main Street of Granby and actually was taking out buildings as he passed, took out the t much of the town hall, took out the library, may have gone through the Liberty Bank, it actually looks like he might have punched in one side of a new Liberty Bank in Granby and came out the other. This was, uh, these pictures were taken, again, this is fast forward, but these pictures were taken at about 4 o'clock or so. This would have been about an hour into the rampage. And you can see the armor plate on the side of that. It didn't seem to matter what uh, police officers did with the rifles and such, and they could not pierce it. This was an earth scraper they moved in to try to do some combat, to try to in some way immobilize the scraper. Almost uh, got to where he was turning it over at that point there, but the scraper is just no match for the the, the cat there that the caterpillar turned tank. Hey, if you're just joining us, it's now 5 o'clock. This is News 4 at 5. This story's been developing since about 3 o'clock. This is file tape of a man who's got into some a bulldozer that he's made into a makeshift armored covered bulldozer and he's damaged or destroyed half a dozen buildings in Granby, a town of about 1500, about 50 miles west of Denver in Grand County. So far we're hearing no one's been injured but that has not been confirmed. Luann, let's go back to you please. Tell me you talked about this a little bit earlier, but you look at that vehicle, you can't see anybody in there. Did you ever get a look at the person who's inside? We never did, and I think that because he geared this up, he outfitted it to act like a tank, that he has a very, had a very tiny kind of viewpoint, uh, point of view that he could see out of. We were skeptical when we first arrived on scene that there was any way for him to fire this, uh, fire any weapons out of this, and I think that's exactly the case. What you see on top of there is debris, some uh, venting, a whole lot of cinder blocks. He's actually pushing cinder blocks. These, uh, these are remnants. This is debris from the buildings he's taken out over the course of the past hour or so prior to when these pictures were taken. Now, if you'll stay with us, he is just headed westbound again. This is tape. He is just again headed westbound into the downtown area right there. May have taken out a radiator. He doesn't stop for light poles. He doesn't stop for buildings. He takes out the corner of the copycat store. Again, this is right in downtown Granby. And then the gamble store next to this became another prime target. He backed up while the radiator's smoking, while he has any power left, he's going to attack that Gamble's appliance store. Many of the stores, the buildings, the offices that we have seen him take out apparently seem to have some rhyme or reason to him, uh, some kind of history, some kind of ongoing gripe that were part of his problem with the, the city officials and some of the other business owners in Granby. He's going to turn around here and make one last stand and, and shove that uh, caterpillar into the Gamble's appliance store. Lou, according to some witnesses, that he reportedly also is armed with a machine gun. Can you see that from your vantage point? We, we think there is absolutely no truth to that. We were hearing different reports, some along those lines. We also heard reports that at one point they were trying to get an armor-piercing machine gun brought in from Hot Silver Springs, which is about 10 miles down the highway. That apparently was their thought as to what their only hope was as to how to stop this man. But he actually ended up stopping himself. You can see now that long stream of, of wet pavement there. That that's the radiator, apparently took out the hose or some other part of a radiator underneath his caterpillar. And he is going to make one last stand, go over the curb, and start punching his way into the gamble store and into the back of that. When we left the area of Granby about 20 minutes ago, he had wedged himself in the back end of this store um, and, began, and apparently had taken out the radiator and he had become immobilized. And we had SWAT team members trying to figure out how to get inside. The, the caterpillar. And is that where it stands right now, Lou? Have they gotten inside? Do we, you know? We don't know. We haven't mm -hmm. been able to communicate with our crew on the ground up here. He 
he, you can see he just is deliberate and determined and nothing will stop him except his own equipment. What we're going to do, if you can stay with me now, he's going to make one last stand here. We're going to fast forward again and show you how far he gets and then we'll take it up to where he, we actually have members of the uh, Grand County SWAT team, the Sheriff's Office SWAT team, standing on top of the Caterpillar trying to figure out how to get in. I'm sure police officers, sheriff's deputies were themselves assuming for a time that he was armed because they were trying to keep their distance, trying to take cover. Actually took cover, as you can see there, behind the scraper. But they seemed to realize at some point that he was unable to shoot out and that at this point he was like a turtle on his back. He was very vulnerable. He had gotten himself wedged. He disabled the caterpillar and there was no place for him to go. The challenge now was to get him out of there. We don't know how that stands. So the video we're looking at is of that uh, department store you were talking about is also, uh, we understand that, uh, the hardware store, I also understand that he did some damage to a bank, a uh, Liberty Bank that was recently opened, and the town's newspaper building, a two-story structure as well. Sky High News is the newspaper office there. We're told that that's virtually a rubble. Uh, we heard from Terry Hurdle on News 4 earlier, and she owns a, an antique gun shop, black powder gun shop at the other end of the store, and she said that somebody came running in and told her to run out because it looked like this man earlier was making a beeline for their store and then turned and went, went elsewhere. Yeah, it seems again, as we talked about earlier, that it was very systematic that he was picking and choosing where he was going. He was very deliberate in his choices. Yeah, there may well have been a method to his madness, which is probably a, a good way to look at it right now. Uh, Pilot Mike Silva, photographer David Gregg, and I have, have taken a poll. We've been flying collectively about 70 years in this market. We've never seen anything like this. Yeah. You know, Luann, we're, we'd like to go now and stay with us. We understand that you've got great video and you definitely have a vantage point and you understand what's going on and you've certainly done a great job bringing us up to date. But we'd like to talk now with Bonnie Brown. Bonnie is joining us by telephone. And Bonnie, we understand that you are a friend, perhaps, of the man who is inside that bulldozer. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. What can you tell us about this person? Well, he systematically is going through the different buildings. Um, that is correct, the information about the ongoing dispute with the concrete company. And he went to Gambles because the person who owns it was on the town council that had to do with um, accessing excessive taxes on his property that he purchased to um, build his muffler shop. And he talked with me about doing this uh, back in January in just in a conversation while we were having dinner, and of course I thought that he was just kidding. I had no idea that he would follow through with it and, and continue. Bonnie, without giving us his name, and please don't, uh, tell us when you did talk to him, and he, he was planning this according to you, did he mention the buildings he was going to hit, the specific buildings? Um, no, he just said that the people that um, caused him harm, that he, he was going to... Um, well, I, I'm trying to think of how I put it, that, that he would pay them back Bonnie, for what they had done to him. Take us again through his gripe. I don't quite understand what he was upset about. Well, you know, I wasn't really paying attention because I thought that he was just kidding, and he had mentioned something about um, that he purchased this land to build his muffler store at uh, a public land auction, and that unbeknownst to him, the man who had owned the property and that was losing it was bidding against him and he didn't wasn't able to exceed the bid that this person had bid on so he ended up winning the property and the man um, actually had um, was had annexed this piece of property um, under the table with the town of Granby and that Marv didn't know anything about this and so he tried to sell the man, the previous owner, the land back, and he um, didn't have enough money. And so then when Marv was trying to develop this property... Oh, Bonnie, let's jump in here. Let's be careful not to say names because obviously this person uh, is, is, is not considered uh, uh, he's a suspect. He but, hasn't been but, identified. Exactly. Yeah. So. He's still inside. We understand. Tell me about this vehicle. Did he actually say he was going to take a bulldozer and armor it? Well, he didn't say he was going to armor it. He said, I'm going to take a bulldozer and just and to the town. And did he say specific buildings, specific businesses? No. No, because I didn't know the people that were involved. He just said that it was the town council members. And, and so I'm assuming that he would just be 
because several other buildings that were taken out had to do all something part to do with this land transaction and the taxes that were levied upon him, and he said that it cost Thank you.